If you asked me this time last year if I considered myself a creative person, I would have shrunk back, shook my head, and said, no, 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 I'm not creative. This year, having completed my first year of film and TV at Hillsong College, I think my relationship and perspective on me being a creative person has completely shifted, changed. This video aims to show you how I've developed as a creative this year from my first creative project to a short little documentary to a little short film. And yes, you will be seeing all of that. Oh my god, I'm so nervous about it. I have a fascination with memories specifically our ability or inability to capture them. For me, it started with iPhone cameras, then GoPros, then Polaroids, then more cameras. But this year, it switched to journals. Uh, a lot of them. <laughs> There's something so timeless about words, true to the moment, but coupled with a picture, you've got a frame. Matched with a moving visual, you've got a scene. Compiled and you've got a story. As a matter of fact, today's one that is quite unusual, but it would still like to be told nonetheless. <laughs> November 24, 2019. Embarkation. A few weeks back, I went on a seven-day cruise with my Tita Karen and a great friend, Emma. I've never gone on a cruise before and I didn't know what to expect. Considering the size of my luggage, I had to bring the essentials, the bare necessities. Yes, I did not know that you can actually bring a carry-on and a check-in like I just thought you could just bring one uh, anyway I didn't know anything about these cruises okay it meant I needed to exclude my big camera which I quickly quickly regretted <laughs> just a quick message from editing Hannah yes all of the footage that you will see of this trip are taken from my GoPro or from my iPhone so I hope to prove, not prove, not like to prove myself, but I just want to show people that, hey, you don't need good equipment to make a good video. Just wanted to say that. Okay, continue watching the video. It was very similar to my thought pattern at the beginning of the year. You know, moving to a new country, not knowing what to expect. So I tucked my love for content creation under my bed, tucked it under the rug because I was adjusting, because I was settling in. And you know, now I look back and I kind of regret it. It wasn't until I came across Matthew 25, verse 14 to 30 that I realized what I was doing. Let me summarize. So there was a man who went on a journey. He had a lot of property, so he had to entrust it to somebody. There were three servants that he entrusted it to. The first servant, he entrusted five talents. One talent is a year's wages. So you can imagine how much five talents was, a lot of money. And then to the second servant, he entrusted two talents. And to the last servant, he entrusted one talent. It says in the Bible that he entrusted as many talents to them as their ability required. While the man was away, the servants did what they must with the money. The first one who had five talents invested it and got five talents more by doing so. And the second one invested it as well and got two talents back as well. So now they've doubled what their master has given them. The last servant though, he dug at the ground, hid the talent, and made sure that nothing would happen to it because he was scared to invest it. So now when the man came back, you know, excited to come back to his property, the first servant said, you have given me five talents, I give you five talents more, you get 10 talents. Wow, the master was so happy, said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been entrusted with little, I will give you some more. And he said the same thing to the second servant because he had two talents, but he invested it and he doubled his portion. To say the least, the master was so upset with the servant that did not invest his talents. So initially, when you think about this, you're like, oh, this is a parable, this is a story talking about investing, I should invest my money. But if you think about it, and it's funny how it's actually called talents, but this is the same thing with the gifts that God has given us, the talents that God has given us. If we just tuck our talents away on the ground and don't take risks to develop it, and don't take risks to put it out there, and don't take risks to, you know, let it grow bigger than God initially gave it to us, then wow, we're not honoring our master. We're not honoring the God that gave us these talents. So when it comes to creativity, it's better to put it out there, to take a risk, than to do nothing at all. The fear of human opinion disables. Trusting in God protects you from that. Proverbs 29 verse 25. A lot of the reasons why we might not consider developing our talents is because Oh, there are better people out there. Oh, I could never be as good as this person. Oh, I don't want to make a mistake. Fear of failure. You don't... Wow. Yes, you're going to go through difficulty. Maybe you're not going to be the most talented, the most pretty, the most amazing, but you can be the most hardworking person. You could be the risk taker in the room. Can you imagine? That would be so cool. November 25, Dunes and Dorothea. Our 
escapade left us feeling quite spent and tired. There's no better wind down for people like Emma and I like a nice movie. We watched 20th Century Woman. It revolves around a single mother in her mid-50s named Dorothea and how she navigates parenting an adolescent son together with the people closer to her in the hopes that he may develop into a mature man. One line really stuck with me though. Having your heart broken is a tremendous way to learn about the world. In life, you either learn through experience or through somebody else's. And in this specific scene, her son Jamie is not taking her advice. I love the way Dorothea framed it because it kind of captures the reason why I love storytelling and creating in general. People don't like being told what to do. So 99.9% .9 of the time, they would not listen to a total stranger tell them how to live their lives. But with beautifully framed images, cinematography, crisp scoring and audio and beautiful script writing oh my god they're gonna listen to you <laughs> we become more open and welcoming when given new ideas in a nice package where does one even begin when they're given a task to be creative Disclaimer, there is no formula to creativity. We all have different processes, but for the specific topic, this is mine. What do I want to say? Passion kickstarts a lot of my creative projects. Oh, well, majority of my creative projects because um, it's easier to say something when you're passionate about it because it just flows through the heart. Oh my God. <laughs> so ask yourself, what are you passionate about and what do I want to say about it? Specifically, I'm passionate about social issues and commenting on society and the faults of this world. <laughs> Specifically, the inconsistency between what we tell or what we say and what we actually think. Um, the human brain just excites me in general. And so I know I wanted to comment on that. Number two, ask yourself, how can I say that? I draw a lot of my inspiration from everyday life, from things that I go through, um, because I know what it feels. It's occurred right in front of my eyes, so it might be easier to replicate it, Well, which is why I kind of like vlogging. My biggest suggestion to find inspiration is to be aware. Just sit down, observe, people watch. Take note of that feeling, that's my biggest suggestion. Take note, guys. Have a notebook around, use your notes app, whatever. Voice record a thought that came into your head. It's all about writing down and just being in that moment and milking it, like really milking it and capturing it. For this particular project, I recognized that every day when I went to college, um, it was the same conversation that people would have when they first see each other. They're like, hey, how are you? Oh, I'm good, 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 good. I'm like, what if somebody's not good? Are they, are they gonna say that they're not good? I took away a lot from this project. Number one, it looks like a vlog still. Why? Because I used to watch a lot of vlogs back then and whatever you consume, that's also what you will produce. So I needed to widen my artistic appetite. <laughs> creative appetite, I don't know. I'm used to working by myself, but collaborating with a crew is helpful, especially because you can focus on doing one thing very well, which in my case was directing, which is not something that I'm used to doing. But my first ever shoot allowed me to be aware of what I was good at and what needed work. For example, I needed to work on my color grading, lighting, and audio when I filmed this, and these are things I wouldn't have considered if I stick to making vlogs. November 27, 2019. Touring, talking, and taking pictures. I'd like to further introduce you to Emma. She likes thunderstorms, messy hair, soy milk, and film. 
and she's someone who I would consider the definition of a creative. Every other week, she and Mune, a friend of mine, would actually plan a connect group. And specifically, those people in our connect group were creative people. <laughs> this is where a group of around 10 to 15 people of similar age and interests gather to eat, hang out, and talk about life and God. It's been an avenue where I learned how other creatives think, how they deal with their insecurities and struggles. And it's been a place where I understood that supporting and collaborating with one another is so much better than tearing each other down and judging, especially in a creative environment. As Emma and I took photos around the boat, it was so influential to see my friend do what she does best, in her element, all passionate. I was brought back to the time when I was behind the camera, where she was the subject. I love abstract art. I love everything that's not obvious. My name is Meng Yu Zhou, but people call me Emma, and I just turned 23. I started taking photos when I was a little kid. I used to just take my dad's camera and just take random photos. My whole childhood was based in China. This project taught me that everything, the root of everything that I would do, creatively or not even creatively, was people. It was about people, by people, and for people. Because at the end of the day, the more people you learn about, and the more you learn about yourself, the more you're able to reveal the infinite facets of our God. Like I imagine it, my parents, for example, my mom and dad, all of us kids show a different version of my parents. And so if we learn more about other people, because God is so complex, because He is immense, because He is immeasurably greater than we can think or imagine. We can only get to know Him through getting to know other people, because we're His children. Like, that's how unique He is. We, he needs like 7 billion people to even try to represent Him as a God. So anyway, getting to know people brings you closer to God. That's what I believe. God created mankind in His own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. That's Genesis 1 verse 27. At the end of the day, as Emma said, he is our creator. And as those made in his image, we can't help but be creative people. Because our God himself is creative. That's how he introduced himself to us in Genesis. He said, God created the heavens and the earth. His first definition of who he was, was a creative. So whether you believe it or not, it's engraved inside your identity to be a creative, to be a crazy thinker to, 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 to look at the world in, in ways that people haven't seen the world before. All we have to do is ask God to inspire us, to feed our different perspectives, and try new things. And trust me when I say this new side of you will come alive. It will come alive. November 28th and 29th, 2019. Exploring the coasts. is the only person in the film process that has a blank page. What? This daunting task became very much apparent when I started my first short film. Ooh! I cringe thinking about it. Greetings, my friend Brenna. Greetings? Uh, Brenna! Uh, too many ads. Sup, mate? Mate? Dearest Brenna, I had the loveliest afternoon with you today. A full version of this sits comfortably in my hard drive where it will stay.
If there's one thing I found very challenging about this project, it was that I was used to just capturing the beauty of life that was already there in front of me. But replicating it with beautiful dialogue, um, artificial audio, realistic scenarios, and a flow, it's like something so foreign to me. <laughs> the script is the backbone of everything because it's the story that drives the film. Not the audio or the visuals or even the acting, I think. At first, I was very unhappy with this project because it looked better in my head. But a friend of mine, Paulina, told me that the thing about young creators and the reason why we kind of get discouraged easily is because our taste is up here, but our skill is down here. Because now we're exposed to so many people's work, online, theaters, at the palm of our hands. We see what people are making and we develop a taste that is far, 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 far different from our actual ability as people who are just starting out. But every little project that we do, every little idea that we develop, that moves us closer to the taste that we develop. So take a step closer, even if it's a small step, even if it's a leap. As long as you are going towards that taste level that you have developed, progress is progress. <laughs> there is no lose, only win or learn. Great saying, Mahatma Gandhi, <laughs> but it's very true. You don't lose when you make a bad project because you've learned a lot of things about yourself. One being that I really need to work on script writing and two being that sometimes the things that I muster up in my head might not be the reality of what my project will look like and that's life. That is life. I think the, the, the biggest like, what is it? The nirvana of filmmakers is coming up with an idea in your head and really being able to translate that into reality. That's the goal, people. That's the goal. <laughs> November 30, 2019, Disembarkation. And yes, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you did engage from this video, studying film really pushed my limits in terms of what I can and cannot do. Um, and it's shocking that a seven day cruise allowed me to discover that. <laughs> Speaking of this cruise, I would like to thank Tito Karen for inviting me to come join. They made the arrangements for me to go on the Explorer Dream Cruise Line, which if you guys are interested in it and if you kind of liked how it looked, you can check out the link down below. I'm putting it there. So maybe you want to take a family trip or something. Thank you to Emma for accompanying me and for helping me develop as a creative this year. You being my connect group leader has really just opened up my eyes to the possibilities of this world when we take risks and when we collaborate with people that we look up to and when we aren't too hard on ourselves. <laughs> this video is a little new, a little uncomfortable because you don't really know what's gonna happen and you're not used to this format and I'm not used to this format but I honestly really like it because I think it's a better representation of what really goes on in my head. <laughs> It is messy up here, it is not fixed, it is unstructured, but I'm trying to get it across as best as I possibly can. <laughs> and so I hope you picked up something from this. It's not a conventional vlog, but I like it. <laughs> We're gonna be finishing up this video with a quote that has guided me throughout my creative process quite a bit. And it's from a man, Kurt Vonnegut. If you guys haven't read any of his stuff, do so. <laughs> Nobody will stop you from creating. Do it tonight, do it tomorrow. That is the way to make your soul grow, whether there is a market for it or not. The kick of creating is the act of creating, not anything that happens afterward. I would tell you all watching this screen, before you go to bed, write a four-line poem. Make it as good as you can. Don't show it to anybody. Put it where nobody will find it. And you will discover that you have your reward. So yes. That's the end of this video. Bye. Bye. Uh, another thing in terms of the holiday video. Yes, I'm sorry guys. I really tried my best to bring out my camera during Christmas to video as much as I can. But honestly, I haven't seen my family in like a long, long time. And it just felt like a sin. 
to have a screen between me and everything that was happening in Christmas. I tried. Look. Footage. I tried. <laughs> but it's just not enough to encapsulate everything that happened. I enjoyed it with my family and with my friend Joy who visited me. Um, she was my housemate in Hillsong and she visited me for the holidays and I just wanted to spend it with them and really just be there in the moment. So I'm sorry, yes, the holiday video was not here this year, but I'm telling you, I'm already planning the holiday video for next year. <laughs> so that will be my apology. <laughs> but yes, look forward to it.